All right, Shalom. All praises unto Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. That's the names of the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew. As always, I'm giving double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone, aka 100% Truth. Because over on here on this channel, on this, I don't know about other channels, but on this channel and all the Great Millstone channels, we're coming with 100% truth. So if you don't want 100% truth, this is not the place for you, right? I'm going to say Shalom to the hopeful elect Akim. What's good? I'm just going to respond to this, this comment, man. Every day is just one of these guys. Bro, you get tired of reading these comments. All right? It's very irksome. This comment is very irksome, and others like it. I don't I don't like it. But that's why we got to keep making these videos, man. We got to keep correcting people, keep teaching people. These people out here don't know what the hell's going on. Christians don't know what the hell's going on. They don't really know the Bible. They, they, they just follow the traditions of men, the traditions of the church. And so they say silly things like this. All right, I made a video. Well, let's watch let's watch the video real quick if it plays i'm driving home i don't know if my internet works matthew good. 15 and 11 not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man but that which cometh out of the mouth this defileth a man christians use this scripture all the time to justify eating pork and other unclean animals they'll say it doesn't matter what you put in your mouth it matters what comes out that is not talking about eating pork that's ignorant Go to the beginning of the chapter to find the proper context. Matthew 15 and 2. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. He was talking about eating bread with unwashed hands. That's why verse 9 says this. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines the commandments of men. Forbidding people to eat without washing their hands is not a commandment in the Old Testament. But there is a law in Leviticus 11 and 7 that says you're not allowed to eat swine's flesh. When the words, it's okay to eat pork, come out of your mouth, you defile yourself. Matthew. Right. When you, exactly. When you say, when you say it's okay to eat pork... All right, and other, uh, you know, you can eat uh, crawl, crawl, what's some crawfish, crawl daddies, whatever they have, it, worms and squid, cats and dogs, any kind of other abominable uh, animals, unclean animals. When you say it's okay to eat unclean animals, you defile yourself. When that, when, when that, when that comes out your mouth, you defile yourself because now you're teaching the people to break the commandments. Like Matthew five seventeen through nineteen says. It says, whoever shall uh, break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them shall be uh, great in the kingdom. All right, that's Matthew 5, 17 through 19. Well, I didn't quote the whole thing, but I think it's like 19 right there. All right, but look, here's, I just got this comment, was it three hours ago? I just seen it. He said, that's not the verse Christ used to change the Jewish dietary law for Christians? <laughs> he said, that's not the verse that Christ used to change the Jewish dietary law for Christians. He said, it's Acts 10 and 15. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Right, and this is another, I've made videos on this that all the other brothers have also. Man, these people, they don't, they don't know the Bible. If he would have just read the whole chapter, if that's even a dude, who knows? But if they would even read the whole chapter, they would know that that's retarded what they just said. Because what he just quoted is a, a parable, right? What do you quote? Acts 10 and 5. Let's get it real quick. Let's get Acts the 10th chapter. I, I'm going to try to get as much as I can't. As I'm driving right now. It's going to be hard. I'm going to try to get what I can get. I didn't have time to dive in doing some bullshit. Uh, X. Uh, shit. Hold up, what, what scripture did he quote? Oh, it's 15. X 10 and 15, that's what he quoted. 
Actually, let me get it. Uh, this is when Peter had a dream, right? I'm going to start at Acts. Damn, that's a long one. 10 and 9. On the morrow, as they went on the journey and drew nigh into the city, Peter went upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. He fell into a trance. And saw heaven open in a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Hold on a second. I got to cross this intersection. All right. And saw heaven. I just read that. Uh, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creepy things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake to him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that, that call not thou common. Now Christians use that scripture to say, See, you can eat porks, you can eat squids, you can eat alligators, you can eat snakes. I mean, according to the Christians, uh, you can eat worms, you can eat cockroaches. Why not? Go get you some chocolate-covered cockroaches. Okay, go get, just get you some, saute you some roaches up in the pan. Why not? Uh, Christians say everything's clean. Go get you, eat some bed bug cereal, bro. Go get you a whole bunch of bed bugs, <laughs> some cockroaches, <coughs> some maggots, and mix it all up together. Make some maggot jambalaya. Well, jambalaya, that's fine. I got crawfish or whatever. That's disgusting. All right. But but Christians say you can eat everything's clean. So that means you can eat vultures. So no, you cannot eat vultures. But a Christian would do it. That doesn't even make any sense, bro. You're telling, you're going to eat, that don't even make no sense, bro. They out there eating dolphins and killer, they'll eat any animal on earth eating kangaroo, you know, <laughs> eating monkey brains and stuff. Okay, like on India. Yeah, that's the Christian's dinner table is like the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. You know, they say you can eat anything. You got they got snake surprise, eyeball soup. Why not? The Christians say everything's clean. You can eat eyeball soup with a side of maggots and worms. Why not? They're making spaghetti out of worms. Why not? What's the big deal? You know? But no, you cannot eat spaghetti made out of worms. Okay, that's disgusting. That's filthy. So when Christians are teaching people that you can eat whatever you want, that's actually uh, sick and sadistic. It's actually very... Man, people going to get sick listening taking y'all's advice, man. Okay, people going to get sick, man, listening to y'all. Going to get parasites and all kind of diseases listening to a Christian, bro. No, you're not allowed to eat pork. It's the filthiest thing on the planet. You're not supposed to eat it. Just like you're not supposed to eat catfish. The law in Leviticus 11th chapter, you can read all the dietary laws in Leviticus the 11th chapter. And it tells you, anything out of the waters, the only thing from the waters you can eat, it has to have fins and scales. Catfish don't have scales. Sharks don't have scales. You can't eat shark fin soup. You okay? You can't be eating dolphins, bro. Oh, out there eating porpoises. A Christian to eat anything. All right, that's the heathens. Y'all heathens, man. That's a and, and what's that? A, a synonym in for a Christian is a heathen. I can't even call them Christian. We call them so-called Christians because the word Christian means the anointed ones. They're not anointed. They've been anointed with filth. With fucking. I mean, yeah. You know, they say everything's clean. I guess you can go drink a glass of blood. Go drink a glass of piss. You know, eat a doo-doo milkshake with strawberries in it. All right, well, let's keep going. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, man, do I got to read it? I'm trying to drive. Okay, read that. Read that. I'm going to scroll down just to save time. I don't want to crash while I'm driving. All right. Because uh, when you keep reading... We're going to get all the way down to Acts 10 and 28. Now, check this out. Okay. Uh, actually. Uh, actually, right here. 
Acts 10 and 25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him. So Cornelius. Cornelius was actually an Israelite, all right? But, uh, he was uh, considered a heathen because he was uncircumcised, unclean. He wasn't keeping the laws. So he was counted as a heathen until he comes into faith. Now you call him an Israelite again. All right. And we're going to get into that too. Proof that he's an uh, Israelite. It tells you that in the Greek. Acts 10 to 26. Well, actually. And Peter was coming in. Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. Right. So you're not supposed to be bowing down to another man like that. Uh, we bow to the Lord. All right. Uh, that reminded me of Mordecai. Remember Mordecai refused to bow? Uh, he, was in the, he was in the spirit. Acts 10 and 27. As he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Now listen up good. And he said unto them, Ye know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Exact same word it used up there. Was that the 15th verse? Or the 16th? What was that? 14? Common or unclean. Right there, the 14th verse and the 16th. 14 and 15. All right, common or unclean. So that was talking about those animals, supposedly. But look, let's read this again. Acts 10 and 28, and he said unto them, You know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come to one of another nation. But God hath shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So those animals represented people. He wasn't literally telling them to eat all these different animals. That's not what I was talking about. It was a vision. All right, using uh, some deep symbolism, you know, metaphors. Okay, he's seen a vision, and everything was symbolic. So those animals were symbolic of people. Obviously, that's so. He told you right here, bro. Obviously. So man, that's the IQ of a Christian. Okay, the IQ of a Christian is like room temperature. Okay, in the winter time, <laughs> with no heat. <sighs> And he said unto them, you know how there's an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man uncommon or unclean. Right. So the Lord showed him that he was not to call Cornelius unclean. Because you know Cornelius was a, Cornelius was a Roman centurion. He dressed like a Roman. Probably talked like a Roman. All right. Grew up in the Roman culture. However, he believed on the Lord. So that right there, that right there makes him clean. We're cl uh, clean through the blood of Yahweh Shai, man. But Cornelius is an Israelite because it says, come unto one of another nation. Now, I believe when you look that word nation, it doesn't really say nation in this scripture. That's not what the Greek text says. This is why you got another reason why you got to study the Greek I notice too I'm, certain videos you make when you start going into Greek and Hebrew too much, it don't get a, get a lot of views. People, man, people don't like studying. They don't like looking words up. They just want to be entertained. You know, they want to see us cuss people out. They want to see us talk shit about somebody else. That's what people want to see. What they don't want to see is looking up words and definitions. All right, nation. All right, okay, let's look up the word for, uh, let me do it like this. I like the way it looks like this. All right, I got to maneuver through here so I don't sideswipe nobody. Uh, and he said unto them, ye know how it is an unlawful thing and an anthem, and a, a, that's like the same, all right, I don't need to think about that, for a man or do to keep company to come unto one of another nation now here's the word for another nation uh, let's look that up it doesn't really say another nation actually when you get into it you know that's why you discover all kind of mysteries and secrets when you study the original text 
So it says Alophilos. I'll, let's see how the blue letter Bible dorks. Strong's G 246. Oh, yeah. Alophilos. Alophilos. I don't think he ever pronounces anything right, to be honest with you. Uh, I say Alophilos. Uh, what do you say? So let's look at it. It consists of two words. Alos, which means an, another. Right? I'm pretty sure that means another. Let me look it up. Alos. Come on, bro. Uh, else. Yeah. Else. More. Another. Yeah. So it's a. Alos phylos is a uh, compound word consisting of the first word I just clicked at alos and the second word is phyle or phylos. What does this say? I'm pretty sure it means tribe. Offshoot, race, or clan, kindred, tribe. Oh. What I click on? Go back. Yeah, it really means tribe. A tribe, a clan. Because there's 12 tribes to the nation of Israel. Alright? Because, you know, uh, each tribe is actually like a nation. You know, Israel's a great multitude, man. Well, what he's saying, because since Israel is such a giant multitude, and you had all these other tribes, you know, a lot of the Israelites, they got scattered among the heathens, and they took on uh, heathen customs, and they became unclean. And when they, they were uh, physically and spiritually uncircumcised. Like, all those so-called Greeks in the New Testament are obviously really Israelites, but they were being called heathens, because they weren't keeping the law. They were physically uncircumcised. Like, they, their penises were not circumcised. They were not keeping the law. All right? So so the Jews who were living in the state of, uh, in the land of Israel at that time, you know, during the time of the Lord, they would frown upon those 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 uh, Greeks. They would frown upon them Greeks because they, they wore the Greek clothing, you know. They were uncircumcised. So they was eating pork, you know. They was just fought, they worship Zeus, worship my idols, acted like heathens, talked like heathens. You know they was gay, you know. So they not all of them, but so they would look down upon them, right? Because they was acting like heathens, so they called them heathens. So when you look that word up, alophilos, it really means it says an offshoot, a race or clan, a kindred or a tribe. It means tribe. Look. Usually that word is translated in the Bible as tribe. When you go down here, it shows you every time this Greek word appears in the Bible. And you can see, it's almost always translated as tribe. Every time you see the word 12 tribes, you see that word phylos. Like right there, Matthew 19 and 28. Hey, that's fire scripture, bro. What y'all know about that 12? Oh, I'm about to pull up right here. Hold on a second. I got to pull over, man. I got to pull over. If I wants to talk. Oh, shit. It's hot as fuck out here. Hold on a second, y'all. It's like, yeah, I should have stopped the video and came back. But it's all right. We can do this. All right. Matthew 19 to 28. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve throne twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So he said that they're going to judge the twelve tribes of Israel, sitting on twelve thrones. And it's all about Israel. Twelve Israel, twelve tribes. You know, the and it's talking about the kingdom. Okay, that's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And it also said regeneration. Because Peter, you know, he was talking to the disciples right there. Peter never sat on the throne. James, James's never sat on the throne. Thomas never sat on the throne. Thaddeus never sat on the throne. Matthew never sat on the throne. John never sat on the throne. But that's why he said in the regeneration. Regeneration, that means when you regenerate, you come back to life again. All right. So he said in the regenerate, that's in reincarnation. That's talking about a future time. He said in the regeneration, when the son of man shall sit 
in the throne of his glory, ye also sh shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Right, and Cornelius, he's part of them twelve tribes of Israel. Because the Bible's only for the Israelites. All those Gentiles in the New Testament are all Israelites. But they was being called unclean. But that's why the Lord gave Peter that vision and said, what? You shall now call no man uncommon or unclean. But look, every time you see that word phylos in the Greek, it's always translated as tribes. Look, tribes, tribes, Faneuil tribe, the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, there's Luke 22 and 30 echoing what we just read in Matthew. All right, so let's go back, uh, see, Romans 11 and 1 of the tribe of Benjamin. So so that word, was where was we at? That word, alophilos? Let's go back. As an unlawful thing that is a Jew to keep company or come unto of another nation, alophilos. Alophilos. So that means of another tribe, actually. So it didn't really say nation right there. The word for nation in the Greek is ethnos, right? Which is translated as Gentile a lot of times. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. Let's go back to Alophalos. <laughs> uh, it says race for in secular authors from Thucydides now when used in Hellenistic Greek in opposed to a Jew, it signifies a Gentile, one of another. That's not true. Because we just read a whole bunch of scriptures where the word was being used to talk about the Israelites. Every time it said the 12 tribes, tribe of Benjamin, this word was used. So what it is, the Christians always have to, dance. That, the blue letter Bible, it gets trasher by the day too. I think they'd be changing stuff. But you can't just rely on the blue letter Bible. I'll be using other books too and stuff. And, you know, you got to look up stuff up in other places too. Learn the etymologies, learn the roots. But the main thing is learn the context. Because every time this word is used in the Bible, it's always talking about the 12 tribes for the most part. And then you got the other thing in there. Because I could have sworn before this mentioned the 12 tribes and I think they took it out. It says of another nation. That's not what it means though. We just proved that's not what it means. The word for nation is this. Let's type in the word Gentiles. Sure, we gotta go to the New Testament. Shall the Gentiles trust? We go to, let's go to Paul. So it's the same guy, or Acts at least. Let's see what Acts 11 says. Uh, yeah, here's the word Gentiles. The other nations is ethnos. This is the word for nation. But this could also be talking about Israelites too. But, you know, but a lot of time it is used to talk about the other nations because the, the, the Israelites were called heathens, right? Because they were acting like heathens. Even the English word heathen, I believe, is uh, comes from this word ethnos, heathen. All right. Because uh, the Lord said the Israelites are not his people. We could get that. Damn, it is so fucking hot in here, bro. Hosea. Hosea 1 and 10. Oh, actually 1 and 9. Then said God, call his name lo -a me for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. <laughs> this is what the Lord, this is what he said to Israel. He told that the Israelites were being so wicked and so evil that God told them, look, you're not my people. What he said, you're not my people, I'm not your God. <laughs> That's fantastic, man. That's hilarious. Why? Because the Israelites is wicked and evil. Two thirds of Israel, man, are God. Or they worship Satan, bro. They're they're the, the scum of the earth. 
two thirds of Israel ain't no, they're no good, bro. They're no good. They're no good. They're no good. And I hate them. Then said God, call his name Lo I me. What Lo I me literally means not my people. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. So he told two thirds of Israel, he's like, look, you're not my people. Right? So if you're not my who's the Lord's people in the Old Testament and the New Testament? It's the Israelites, right? So when you told an Israelite you're not my people, he's saying, You're not an Israelite. Or you're a heathen. That's what the Lord, you're not my people. What, what, what's a non, not my people is a heathen. He said, you're not my people and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Right. There's so many Israelites on the planet earth. They cannot be measured nor numbered. Israel is a great multitude and they're scattered among all nations. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it said unto them, you're not my people, there shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Ooh, it said Israel, you are the sons of the living God. Ooh. Let's go to Romans. Romans 8. Israel's the sons of God. That's when you go to Romans and it's 8.14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Right? So Israel's the sons of God. The spirit itself bear this witness that our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Lord only came for Israel. That's why he said this. Which one should I get, y'all? I'll just get the easy one. Actually, let's go to 10. Matthew 10, 5 and 6. These 12 Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right, so Cornelius was one of those lost sheep. What does lost mean, bro? Lost means you don't know where they're at. You got to go find them. Because Israel was scattered among all nations. We just read on Hosea. Israel's as numerous as the sands of the sea. What they cannot be measured nor numbered. Nobody knows how only person, <laughs> the only one, <laughs> the only one who knows where all the Israelites are is the Lord. They can he can measure a number, we can't, because you know, we don't when we have an idea, you know, of who all the Israelites are. I mean, when we meet people, we don't know where all the Israelites are. The Lord knows that. So when he sends his son and the angels to the earth, you know, the angels, they, they're going to uh, stick in that, uh, was a, they're going to reap. They're going to reap. They're going to come back and they're going to be the reapers. And they're going to separate the heathens from the Israel. Let's get that, man. Turn that bullshit off. People are having a good old time out here, bro. All right, Matthew 25 and 31. Christians don't know the Bible. <laughs> Matthew 25. Oh, my goodness. Matthew 20. Damn it. Matthew 25 and 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. So before the Lord will be gathered all nations, right? Is he going to save all the nations? Let's read. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. All oh, the sheep. He's going to separate the nations. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. We just read about how the Lord said, go to the lost sheep at the house of Israel. Israel is always referred to as a sheep. The heathens ain't sheep. The heathen is goat. A heathen is a goat. A goddamn Edomite is a hairy goat. All right. <laughs> All the heathens are goats. They're not sheep. They're imposters. All right. So let's read this again for the slow people. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. But the Christians, they say the uh, 
We're going to, the curses say we're going to bring all nations together. You know, they're teaching the New World Order doctrine. <laughs> they're teaching the small hot, small hat doctrine. You know, inclusive, inclusivity. I can't even say that word, bro. Okay, they want to. They think they can bring everybody together. It don't work like that. You can't bring everybody together. All nations were not created the same, and we're not designed to live together. And before him shall be gathered all nations. He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. <laughs> So the sheep's going on the right hand. Right equals righteous. Left equals sinister. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come to those on his right hand, this is what he said. Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the from the foundation of the world. All right? And because this kingdom was prepared for Israel, before the earth was even created. Israel was predestinated to get this blessing and get the kingdom before the earth was even created. Everything was predestinated. It tells you that in the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. Uh, we was chosen before the world was even formed, bro. Predestination. I should look that word. Is, ain't there one like that? In, is that Romans? Was that eight? I was just there. I think I... Pre, does it say predestinated? I don't know. Let's look it up. So, the Lord clearly said, well, what? That he's coming back to separate the nations, right? It, and the Lord and the angels got to do that because the man, we, we'd get it wrong if it was up to us. The Lord got to do it because Israel scattered among all the nations, right? Like Cornelius is one of those Israelites, one of those lost sheep. But he had been found. And when the Lord come back, the Lord going to put all the nations back in order because right now in the year 2023, for thousands of years, everybody on the earth been having sex with each other. Everybody intermingling, you know, uh, you got all kind of adultery, all kind of whore stuff, you know, all kind of just all kind of just all kind of fucking bro. Right. Babies popping out all over the place, you know, different races mixing together. So this has been going on for thousands of years. And that's all out of order and all the nations got mixed up. So when the Lord coming back, he's going to unmix those nations. He's going to unmix all the mix ups and he's going to set everything straight. That's why he said he's going he gonna to separate the sheep from the goats, bro. Simple. Sheep going on the right, goats on the left. All right. And the goats is going into slavery. <laughs> and he shall set the sheep on it. Right. What was I about to type in? Was it predestinated? Destinated? I'm about to fail. Well, I mean, that's the one I quoted. Well, Ephesians, that's not the one I wanted, though. Was it predestined? Predestined? Oh, well. Uh, according as he has ch chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Right? We was pre we was chosen before the earth was even created, man. Okay, so the Israel, if we know that that it, we was chosen before the earth was even created, the Lord already had everything set in stone from the beginning. So who who did he say his people were in the Old Testament? The Israelites. So why would he change that? If everything was already predestinated, he didn't change it. Malachi 3 and 6 says, the Lord said, I am the Lord, I change not. I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob, who is Israel, are not consumed. Ephesians 1 and 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai Mashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Okay, predestinated. Maybe it's predestined. I don't know, bro. I didn't plan this lesson. <laughs> I, I thought it was pre... Maybe it's predestined. Yeah, that's not how you spell it. Here, we're going to cheat. Uh, bro, my brain just stopped working. Here, let's do this. Predestination. 
I know it's in the book of Romans. Like my brain's fried from the heat. I can't remember where it's at. Book of somebody's probably yelling like, "Man, you dumb! You don't know the scriptures." <laughs> All right, give me the scripture. Uh, is that Romans 5 and 3? I think it is. Let's do this. That's not the one I was looking for. You lied to me. All right. I'm failing. Uh, Romans 8. I thought it was Romans 8. I just don't want to waste all day looking for it. See? Pretend like I was right. Romans 8. Yeah, predestinate bastards. You know, you see, that's sometimes you're trying to find a scripture, man. You know, your spelling's off or you, you got the right word in your head, but it's like, it's, it's a variation of the word, you, you know? That's why you got to memorize all the scriptures. Romans 8 and 30. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. We was already in Romans 8 earlier. Romans 8 and actually, man, this I'm going to read a whole chapter. I'm going to start at 8 and 28 or 20, 29. Uh, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that, all right, if God is with us, then who can be? Nobody's against us, bro. Like, you got people coming up against us like Vocab Malone, thinking he's going to stop us from teaching. He just makes us more popular. He gets us more subscribers. Thanks, Vocab. Appreciate it, buddy. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. And he's talking to Israel. How shall he not with him also freely give us all these things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Is God that justifieth? And who's the elect? The elect is Israel. Let's get that. Oops. Isaiah. 45. In five, four, four, Isaiah 45 and four for Jacob, my servant's sake in Israel, mine elect. So Israel is the Lord's elect. Okay. But you do have the elect of the elect because all of Israel is not Israel. All right. Two thirds of Israel, wicked and evil, and they got to be destroyed. So that's the point, man. Oh, let me go back to the YouTube comment board. I don't even know what's going on. My brain is melting right now. Oh, bro, I do not want this. How do you get out of here? I don't even see an X. Oh, there it is. All right. Oh, I got a new comment. What do you say? What? All right, here you go. Let's watch this video. This is how you spell the Most High God's name in the ancient Hebrew script. Not the modern Hebrew, but the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Hebrew is read right to left. The first character is a Y pronounced Yah. The second character is a H pronounced Ha. The third character is a W pronounced Wa. The third character is an H pronounced Ha. And it's pronounced Yah-Ha-Wa. Yah-Ha-Wa. And the Most High's name in Hebrew consists of two words. The first letter is a word. It's Yah. And Yah means he or him. And the second part of his name is Hawa, Hawa, and Hawa means to be or is. So God's name means Yah Hawa, he to be, he is, because the Most High is everything and all things. What's that, Psalms 83 and 18? Let's get that right quick. 
This is how you spell the most high God's name. Oops. Oh my god. Let's get that song. Let's get it from the blue letter. Come on, bro. Uh, where was we at? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Psalms 83, bro. Sorry, bro. I'm, I'm barely functioning right now. Psalms 83. Ain't that what I put in? The, yeah, that Psalms 83 is like towards the end, ain't it? Like the very last scripture. All right, Psalms 83 and 18. That men may know that thou whose name alone is Yahweh are the most high over all the earth. It says Jehovah. <laughs> That's that. There's no J's in Hebrew. Anybody who uh, knows anything about Hebrew knows there's no J's in it. There's no Ja. You know, a lot of people when they use a Ja, they would use a G for that or something else. But there's no, there's no. That's not. That's not a sound in Hebrew. Ja, isn't gibberish spelled with a G? Check that out. All right, because that's gibberish. Saying the Lord's name's Jehovah or Jesus is gibberish with a G. How you like that? Uh, Psalms 83 and 18. Uh, yeah, his name is Yahweh. Oh, I'm going down here. Sorry, I can't think right now. I'm about to get off of here. <laughs> I'm in slow mode, bro. I'm in energy saving mode. Uh, Yahweh. Sorry, when you look his name up in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. Oh, I just showed you in the video, Yahweh. Yeah, okay, Yahweh. Y H W H. That's the Most High's name. It don't say Jehovah. Look, even on the Blue Letter Bible, it don't have no any J's. It says Yahovah, which is Yahweh, because V's are always sound like W's in the ancient world anyway. It should be pronounced Yahweh. All right. I think still a lot of places in the world now they pronounce V's and V's and W's are similar anywhere, you know, all, all over the world. Words that we would pronounce with a V, they'd pronounce it with a W. So V's are actually W. All right, and they all the V and the W comes from the same letter, which is the Hebrew W. The the U V and W U V and W all descend from the same ancient Hebrew character, and is originally pronounced Wa. But it says Yahweh. That's what it says. Even the blue letter Bible don't say J's. It says pronunciations. Yehovah. So I've never heard anybody call God by Yehow. Ye, ye, ye I've never heard nobody say that. What's how he. Strong's H 3068. Yehovah. Yehovah. I've never heard nobody say Yehovah. They say Jehovah. I mean, if you take that Yahweh, that, that's not even hard to say. It's Yahweh. It's actually almost right. Okay, depending on how you, you know change the vowels and that V to a W the way it should be. But that's the most high. But I'm going to go back up. So the men may know that thou whose name alone is Yahweh are the most high over all the earth. So his name, he only got one name. All right, God's, you know. People say, oh, God has many names. He has one name, bro. But what did his numb nut say? He said, the name is specifically made not to be pronounced. How? How are you supposed to read the law? We as humans cannot understand the complexities of his name. How? It's a four-letter name. It's not very complex at all, actually. There's a simplicity, okay, in, well, in the son and in the father even. Even though the Most High's ways are far beyond our comprehension and all, obviously, but His name is pretty simple Hebrew. Actually, it consists of two words. I just said, showed a video. Yah means He in Hebrew. It's pretty simple. All right, it's in like every sentence ever. The word Yah means He. Hawa, another, is equivalent to the English word to be. Be is. All right, that's like in every sentence ever. So his name is not complicated on that level, unless you're going to go do some uh, <laughs> some uh, quabalistic uh, witchcraft on his name, it's, you know, bringing all these numerology, lining it up with the uh, with the stars and the, the zodiac and doing some bug out shit. OK. The name is specifically made not to be pronounced. We as humans cannot understand the complexities of his name. 
in the true essence of his being. I am who I am. So his name is to be pronounced. That's all through the Bible. Proclaim. <laughs> let's look up. Let's look up. Uh, I'm going to do my Bible. Proclaim. I'm just typing proclaim. The name. Proclaim the name. That just comes. That rolls right off the tongue. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. So you're supposed to proclaim the name of the Lord. I'm going to type, just type in name of the Lord. We'll get a, I'm going to see how many search results we get for this. 115 times. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. James 5 and 14. So you, to, to do something in the name of the Lord, you got to be able to know his name and know how to say it. That is goofy, man. But there's scriptures that say, I'm, I'm going to look, find it. There's scriptures where it, where it comes. I'm going to go to the Psalms. that says it a lot in there. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him. And these are the Psalms. You have to sing the Psalms. Every time you see Lord in all capital letters, that means in the Hebrew, God's name is there. So every time you see Lord in the Psalms, you're supposed to be singing his name while you're doing the song. Were well, you supposed to skip over his name? That's what the small hats do. Okay, they say we don't know. Uh, his name's too sacred to pronounce. We just call him Hashem. Which they, Hashem means the name. Look at this. Psalms 148 and 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, of Yahweh. For his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth tonight. You have to proclaim the name of the Lord. Uh, so that's all through the Bible. I'm trying to figure out when they say the name of the Lord. So he's always calling upon the name of the Lord. How do you call upon the name of the Lord if you're not saying it and not pronouncing it? Right? Psalms 116 and 17. I, I will call upon the name of the Yahweh. I'm trying to see if another one. Praise the name of the... Praise ye Yahweh. Praise... O ye servants of Yahweh. Praise the name of Yahweh. It says his name three times in that one scripture. Psalms 113. Oh, look at this. Psalm, this is what I was looking for. To declare. Declare means to say. Uh, declare comes from the Latin dick. Dick, you know, to dictate. Well, that's where you get this. Sorry, in Spanish, right? Psalms 102 and 21. To declare the name of Yahweh in Zion and praise in his praise in Jerusalem. So you have to declare the name of the Lord, of the name of Yahweh in Zion. That means you got to say it. To declare something means you got to say it. And look, the heathen shall fear the name of Yahweh and all the kings of the, kings of the earth thy glory. Oh, what about this? Psalms 27, some trust in chariots and some are horses, but, but we will remember the name of Yahweh, our power. So we remember the name of our power. Okay. <laughs> this guy don't remember it. He don't know how to say it. He said it's too, it's too hard. The Lord wants us to praise his name. That's why the Lord's name is easy to say. It's easy to break down what his name means. Obviously, the essence of the Lord, you know, when you meditate on what his name means... I mean, obviously, that's a that's going deep right there, right? But the actual breaking it down and the pronunciation is quite easy. All right. Oh, what about this? That's when uh, Elijah he set up a, a altar. He set up a altar, right? Didn't he have unhewn stones? He should have. And uh, he made a bet with the priest of Baal. And he said, check this out. He said, uh, I'm going to do my sacrifice. Y'all can do your sacrifice. He's like, I'm going to call upon the name of the Lord. And he's going to bring down lightning and, you know, and burn his sacrifice up. And then y'all got to do it, too. And even Elijah, he took the water and poured it all over the, the sacrifice before he called upon the name. And it still burned it up. All right. But when, when they called upon the name of Baal, nothing happened. <laughs> so they got put to death. <laughs> Ah, right that brings a smile to your face. The first Kings. Man, let's read that, bro. Let's read that real. First Kings 18. I want to read that. It just made me... That, that made me 
cheerful. Uh, man, my brain's not working. First Kings 18. Oh my goodness. Was that 18, y'all? I'm tripping. I know I forgot the scripture that quick. That's the Alzheimer's kicking in. Mixed with some autism and other stuff. Bruh. For, uh, that was that was First Kings 18. Yeah, I was right. 1832. Ah, oh, shit. Oh! First Kings 18 and... Man, this thing is pretty long, actually. What have I done? Alright. Alright, right here. And so Ahab said unto the children of Israel, gathered the prophets together into Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto the people and said, How long, how long halt ye be between two opinions? If Yahweh be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. They knew it was about to go down. Then Elijah said unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of Yahweh. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let them choose the one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. For I will dress the other bullock, lay it on the wood and put no fire under. And ye call upon the name of your gods and I will call upon the name of Yahweh. See, it means he's actually going to say the name going back to that comment. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answering and said, it is well spoken. It seems like, that sounds like a reasonable deal, right? And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many and call upon the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock, which was given them and they dressed it and called upon the name of Baal. From morning even until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. He was mocking them, talking shit to them, bro. And, it, you know, that's what people get mad because we mock people. Hey, Elijah was mocking people. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or is he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. It's talking about Baal. He's on a little adventure. And they cry <laughs> yeah, because he said he's not he's not answering the phone. He must not be home. Maybe he's busy. <laughs> and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to Pass when midday was past that they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any answer to any that were regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of Yahweh that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the twelve sons of the sons of Jacob, excuse me, of the twelve. Of the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. Let me read that again. I butchered it. And Elijah took, took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of Yahweh came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of Yahweh, and he made a trench about the altar, great as would contain two measures of seed. Now I can guarantee you those rocks he had were unhewn rocks, too. It was a naturally... Uh, altar made out of natural rock. Naturally, that's a commandment in Exodus 20. And he put the wood in order and cut the bollocks in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. They did it the third time. And the water ran about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. So he poured water all over this thing. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Yahweh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, or not of a heathen, of Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, 
and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Yahweh. He was saying this in front of everybody. He, he knew how to say the name, just like we know how to say the name. Hear me, O Yahweh. Hear me that this people may know that thou art Yahweh, uh, the, the Most High God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, Yahweh, he is the God. Yahweh, he is the God or he is the power. Now that just makes more sense when you say it power because Allah, that, the Hebrew word is Allah, which means God or power. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them to the brooks of Kishron and slew them there. Or Elijah, bro, he wasn't no punk. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of a abundance of rain. And Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked. And he said, there is not, uh, there is nothing. He said, go again seven times. All right, that's the point. I got a point I wanted to get. I'm going to read the whole rest of the book of Kings. <sighs> so we go back to this guy. So, that is, see these people, man, where did they get this stuff, man? The Christians, man, they're, they're done. I don't know who this guy is. The name is specifically made not the name is specifically made to be said. Okay? There's so many scriptures where it tells you to declare the name of the Lord, to publish the name of the Lord. Okay, to declare his name among all the people among all the earth. The script okay, so you're supposed to declare the name. All right? That's why when you say hallelujah, hallelujah means praise Yah, praise him. Yah is short for Yahweh. We say that all the time. So you're, his name is created to be to be praised and to be spread throughout the earth by saying it, and teaching it to others. So you got it totally backwards there, buddy. I thought you were so intelligent with that comment, I bet. Oh, my God. I'm not reading these other comments. All right, I'm done with this. I'm about to get up out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm like melting. I'm giving all praises unto Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shum Rakakwadash, Baraka to Yahweh, Baraka to Yahweh Shai, Baraka to Rakakwadash.